in configuration and setup. And it's a big figure. If you think about it, it's more than one day of work, right? So, and it was not always like that, because if you, if you think about it, what was development look like 10, 15 years ago, it was a completely different story. For example, 10, 15 years ago, it was Java apps, for example, and it was Java from front to back, from top to bottom. You had one version of GVM, one version of the application server, and that was pretty much good. But now, the story is different. So here you can see on the next slide the cloud-native landscape. And if you, if you are a cloud-native developer, and if you work with uh, microservices, this is the tools and technologies you have to work on on a daily basis. And complexity of the application has changed dramatically. Also, if you think about it, our laptops are not ideally suited for this landscape. Because uh, in order to develop uh, cloud-native tools, you need sufficient amount of CPU, sufficient amount of RAM on your laptop. And it's not the case currently. So to develop in this environment, to be comfortable with, you need laptops with, at very least, 24, 32 gigs of RAM. Um, so, and this becomes the first problem. The so second thing uh, is the onboarding process. If you read this book, this is a brilliant book about IT. It's a page turner, actually. So it's called The Phoenix Project. It's uh, described the project which has, which has a lot of issues. One of the issues is the uh, uh, onboarding. So it's a quote from the book. For Phoenix, it takes us three or four weeks for new developers to get built running on their machines. And that's actually not exaggeration. It's pretty much the situation which relatively big companies face nowadays. So the setup and configuration is a big process nowadays. And onboarding can take weeks. So um, this kind of solution for this in the book was using the virtual machines. And the book was written in late 2013. And we know that the first version of Docker and first version of Kubernetes were roughly at the same time, were released roughly at the same time. So if the book was written uh, a little bit later, it would definitely talk about the containers and the orchestration instead of virtual machines. And those two problems, configuration and setup, plus the onboarding, is, uh, are the problems that we want to solve with Eclipse Chair. So as I said, Eclipse Chair is the web ID, but more important, it's Kubernetes native ID for developers and teams. And the motto of the project is that anyone, anytime, can contribute to a project without actually installing software. And now I want to show you how it looks like, how it feels like to develop in Chair way. So let's imagine it's your first day at work and you're in a new company and you are assigned to a new project. So let's go to the GitHub page of this project and we see that it is Quarkus ReactJS hosted application. And the application is actually deployed on OpenShift. So on OpenShift 4 there is very nice topology view. So we see it consists of three microservices. So it's not front end, Quarkus backend and MongoDB for persistent data. The application is pretty trivial, but still it consists of three microservices, and here how it looks like. So we have an input field. Uh, we can in input the title and the content. So let's input hello, Berno, <clears throat> press and submit button, and we have, have a post uh, persisted in the database and reflect it on the UI. Even though it's pretty simple application, uh, development, development setup might be pretty complex because you know you need to uh, install Mongo, you need to install build tools, you need to uh, run the node, run the Quarkus, get it together so that it will run smoothly. So you could easily spend, even though you are a skilled developer, you could easily spend one day of work just for environment setup. And you are assigned to a new issue so let's open it, it's in the GitHub. So display the title of each post in the uppercase. Pretty simple one. So what you would normally do, 
in the regular environment, you would you know, install all the tools, try to set up connections between microservices and fix it. And now I will show you how uh, we promote, what the flow we promote with Eclipse Chat. So at the bottom of the issue, you can see that there is a developer workspace button. And if I click on it, I will be switched to the login page. So I will be provided with the credentials for my account. And once I log in, uh, a new environment would be created for me with not only the source code, which is important part, but more importantly, it would contain all the tools and all the runtimes for uh, starting development of the application on the fly. So let's try to open some files. We can open post, post Java file, post resources to understand what, what it looked like. So we have a Quarkus controller here. We have a MongoDB running, so I can log into Mongo, take a look at the, what databases are there, and I can start my Quarkus backend right, right from clicking on one button which defines the command for running the app. Oops, and the route exposed for the Quarkus backend and I, so I can see it on preview, and I can also access it through the uh, regular browser since its route is exposed. Uh, so Quarkus is running. It's just a simple page. It's, uh, Quarkus is backend part, but it's just a sample uh, index HTML that shows you the, the state of the application. So it's uh, just for development purposes. Now let's run the uh, front end part. Also one click and I have all the commands running for starting the node. And on port 3000 I have a node running now. So let's try, so it's my development environment. Two clicks, two build commands, I have everything set up. Live demo and content. <coughs> Submit. Okay, live demo. Let's take a look at what happens in the database. Uh, I will just remove it here. Open my Mongo terminal. So use sample DB. And DB posts find. Okay, I see live demo title is there. All right, so now let's try to debug it. Let me put some breakpoints in the code. So the, in the issue, we need to change the title, right? So I will put the breakpoint in the get title method and I will run the debugging. So I'll start the debug session right away. And let me refresh the page. Okay, and I'm in the debug view now. So I can see all the local variables of the, of the post. I can see information about the title. I can skip it right now. So debugging also works fine. And I think that I figure out what the trick is and I need just to get title to the uppercase. So you see I have a pretty nice content assist here to uppercase. I forgot to put the brackets. So I immediately get the error marker. I'll put it here. And I also have the nice docs in order to get information about what the uppercase is for the string method. And since it is Quarkus, it's subatomic uh, life reload is enabled by default. So I can just uh, refresh the page. And you see live demo is displayed in the uppercase. So what I need to do now is just to go to my git. So I have a git plugin running here. I can do something like, I 
I can add the commit message here. Create a branch. and push it to my remote. And if I go back to GitHub, I can send a pull request right away. So, and imagine everything was done inside the browser. So I did all the interactions with the applications starting from the onboarding via the single click to committing from my browser. And more importantly, so the point is that if you want to develop microservices and if you develop in the cloud native landscape, you should be able not only run your apps on the Kubernetes or OpenShift, you should run all the tools and all the environment also on Kubernetes or OpenShift. So uh, here we have an OpenShift plugin. The last thing I want to show you is that uh, we can log into our OpenShift cluster here. And what I can do now is I can log in from the uh, Eclipse chat to this cluster. and I can see what applications available for that user. And now if I want to, for example, spin up yet another service or yet another port, what I need to do is literally just to open a terminal and I can do it from the UI, I can do it from command line, I can do just, if I have a template for OpenShift for yet another microservice. Here is the template. I can just do OC apply. And on the topology you can see that the new microservice is about to start. So that's what I wanted to show you during this demo, during this live session. Uh, that first of all, First day at work could be different thingy in the cloud native environment and we move all the complexity and all the tools to the cloud so we do not develop on local host anymore. Um, so I will just quickly touch the Chi architecture because the important thingy uh, before we go into this uh, detailed diagram is that we can imagine that Eclipse Chi consists of two parts. It's controller part, so the main part, which is called Kubernetes API, which spin ups the workspaces, which are literally a ports that, can, that are consist of a couple of containers for tooling, for runtime, for, for testing, etc. So the, the most important thing is that everything is running inside containers and ports. Then uh, going to this diagram, we can see that there is a uh, contain on the bottom we can see a container orchestrator. And the thing is that Eclipse Chi is cloud native IDE that is run on top of Kubernetes or OpenShift, which is downstream project of, of Kubernetes. On, on the top we can see browser and, and it's not a uh, surprise because all the interactions happens from the browser. And you see how fast it was, so you, even might not recognize that I develop inside the browser, not inside my, I don't know, GWT or Swing IDE, right? Then there is a chess server part, and it's actually the controller uh, of, you know, everything inside chess. So it, uh, in charge of authentication, workspace scheduling, scalability, health check, monitoring. We use uh, key clock for identity management, 
Postgres database for persisting the data, but Chess Server is actually the control part that creates workspaces. And workspaces is basically, as I said, a, a port which consists of containers for ID, for uh, runtimes, for development, for tools. Uh, in Chess 7, we def we're defining a new kind of workspace. So we containerizing the ID with zero install and automated configuration. So that onboarding could happen just with one click. And uh, you might uh, recognize similar UX uh, to the VS Code. And the thing is that Eclipse Che uses uh, by default Che uh, TIA ID. And TID is basically promoted as a VS Code in browser. It uses the very same editor which use VS Code. It's called Monaco Editor. That's why look and feel is uh, very similar to VS Code. Uh, we have uh, support of language server protocols and debug adapter protocols. So I, saw, uh, I showed it in the demo. And the, one of the most important things here that Eclipse Shea is compatible with VS Code extensions. Uh, how we achieve the replication of the environment, uh, the brand new thing is also dev file. I, if you're interested in dev file, I encourage you to visit uh, tomorrow a session dedicated to dev file. It's called uh, Development Environment as Code. Uh, I will only touch the basis on that. So uh, basically it's a YAML definition of your development environment. So for my application, it was something like that. So I can show you the raw version of it. So in this YAML file, you explicitly specify everything you need for your project. So starting from the containers, going to the tools, build commands, uh, databases, etc. cetera. So uh, here in the declarative way, you define project, ID, built environment, runtime environment, test environment, commands. It's the, the idea is similar to what for example, build tools like Jenkins promote that they have their file and Jenkins understand it. So here we have dev file that Eclipse Chair understand and creates the environment uh, for you with all you need for development. So again, encourage you to visit the session. Folks will tell a lot more about that. Uh, quickly uh, talk about the roadmap. Our roadmap for the next uh, six, 12 months is split uh, in, uh, into uh, four major sections. You can find it on the Eclipse uh, GitHub in the wiki page, but basically it's just the following. Easy to use, we want to make it easy to use. We want to improve developer experience, improve performance, and uh, the last but not least part is hybrid cloud, so we want to allow uh, not only running the containers, but also building the containers. Uh, and there are already proof of concept with Podman uh, for, for that. And if you want to try it, um, you should go to eclipse.org.chair uh, website. Here you can find all the getting started guides, downloads, documentation, reference to our Matamos channel. So feel free to join. Uh, and the last but not least uh, is that uh, we also have hosted version of Eclipse Chair. It's called uh, chair.openshift.io or Eclipse Chair hosted by Red Hat. And the easiest way to try it is basically you go to eclipse.org.chair. Then you have this SaaS workspace templates. And here we have a set of dev files ready to go uh, to start, you know, coding instantly on hosted version of Chess. So we, here we have Spring, Vertex, Go, Java Gradle, Java Maven, Node, etc. So you just go there, you click a button, for example, Go, Launch Workspace, and you'll be uh, redirected to the Red Hat login page. If you have an account, that's fine, just log in, you will be provisioned with a new user. If not, create an account and uh, you will get access to hosted version of Chair. That's about it. I'm, I think I'm on time, and we have four minutes for questions. 
Yeah, it's, um, uh, the question was what, are, what languages are supported? Uh, so uh, the thing is that we support multiple languages. We are the language server protocol and you can find uh, all the languages that are supported in, at the Eclipse plugin, Eclipse plugin registry. Uh, so there is a repository um, that is called Eclipse Plugin Registry, but literally it's Go, Node.js, Java, Python, PHP. There is a contributions from, from, uh, for Kabul, I think. Uh, there is unfortunately no, no proper document that shows it, but if you go to uh, Plugin Registry, you could find all the things that we currently support because it's keep growing every day. Uh, currently, I think there are uh, around 60 language services not all of them uh, are contributed to Chia, but you know, it's, uh, it's every day it's enhancing. So the, the basic one are supported. Next question. What is the amount of work that needs to be done to add a support for another language if it already has plugin server for the um, So the question is what amount of work is required to support a brand new language when, when uh, there is already a language server? I think it should be relatively easy. So if it is supported inside the BS code, it should be quite easy to backport it to Eclipse Chair. It should be actually just a matter of embedding the VS Code extension that provides a support. For example, we got a support for Quarkus and it was uh, just uh, a, a you know, contribution of the embedding of the VS Code extension. So there might be some API incompatibilities between VS Code, Chatia, and uh, Tia, but in general, it shouldn't be a very difficult. As soon as there is a VS Code extension, the porting uh, new language to Chia shouldn't be a difficult task. Next question. So looks like no questions. Uh, we are just on time. Thank you very much for coming.